But there were some other demos, some of which showcased some technologies that were teased at um, Jensen Huang's keynote mm -hmm. address, which B and Alex were actually in attendance for, which was had all the atmosphere of a rock concert and all the intrigue <laughs> of, a, of a very interesting technical white paper, I'd have to say. Yeah, it was nice. It was very, very nice. But we had this neural materials demo, which yeah. is something that was teased in the Blackwell announcement from Jensen. Mm -hmm. But I think this is very interesting. Basically, you have this a neural network-based technique to depict the characteristics of certain materials that might be very, very challenging to depict using uh, kind of conventional techniques. That's basically the gist here, Alex. Yeah, basically the whole thing is we use simplified models for different types of materials in games. You know, they're BRDFs or BSDFs. And, um, you know, they're limited to like uh, diffuse, very specular, glossy. They're sometimes anisotropic materials. That's pretty rare though. Uh, there's maybe like a specific one for hair, maybe there's one for eyes, etc. But uh, there's a limit. There's limits usually to those, and uh, they and to keep the complexity down so that the shader, just you're not spending all this time shading. Mm -hmm. uh, they are limited in, in their length for games. The complexity is brought down purposefully for offline renders. The the size of a shader actually could be incredibly large, uh, much longer, and it's just not practical for games. So what this does is this is training models for very specific materials and material types um, with many layers of different types of like responses to light within the material itself, like many different layers. Like maybe the first layer is like like a, like a really direct specular reflection, but then it like diffuses beneath the surface and it and then maybe it spreads out. You know, you'll see this with like car paints. You'll see this with here they show off like a silk. Yeah. material where there's multiple directions of light scattering through and around it. Yeah, it just has like this incredibly complex lighting response that you almost never see in a kind of material in, in an actual shipping video game. No, it's impossible. Yeah. I don't think that this has ever been done before. And this is essentially bridging the gap to essentially real time of bringing offline rendered material quality to real time. And you'll see this like there's like the patina of like ceramics will be different. There'll be dust, there'll be smudges. And then below that, you'll see some other stuff. It just like goes, there's like something like 15 layers deep that is kind of, I wouldn't say compressed down into this neural texture, but it's trying to represent it at, uh, at, on a certain level. And they would flip on and off in between the demo to show some things. And there's one, there's a couple areas that I would love to highlight. There's these gems on the front of this thing where when they turn it on and off, you can see like, such an incredible difference in like the like there's like a star cross pattern on the on the gem itself and like multiple layers of specularity and then below that you see like the, the substructure <laughs> there's so many different layers to this material of real in real life you know you'd be like bouncing a ray through that like infinitely to try and get these like these larger responses but here it's like the material giving you that you right. know and this was all a path trace demo too, so th that tells you a lot about it. But it really just made the materials look a lot, lot better. And when you flip on and for back and forth, you can see. I mean, really, if you saw this in a game, you'd be hard pressed to like actually think it was real time. Uh, it was another ridiculous demo, and there was a lot of there's a lot of technicalities to this. So uh, one of the things that Jensen also mentioned, I think, as well, like. This demo here was also using neural texture compression as well right. too, and the de well, it's just neural texture compression, and uh, this allows so the texture is not only a lot, the the material is not only a lot faster than it would be if it was using like the offline quality ones, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also saving space versus reg regular like block compression textures that you would see in modern games. It is actually a lot smaller than them while being higher quality. And this is kind of like the DLSS advantage that we've seen in games before where DLSS can look better than native. Uh, this, this is actually a lot more hardcore than DLSS. I'd say this looks a lot better than the native material response mm -hmm. while being lighter uh, in terms of memory. Obviously there's a trade-off though in processing time because you're using machine learning to do this up in real time. There's this cost of running it in real time on the tensor cores. So there's a trade-off there. You're, you're mm -hmm. spending a bit more frame time to do this. 
uh, but it is a lot cheaper than it would be if it was an offline material, which is wouldn't run actually. And also that like the memory savings would be a big deal too. This was yeah. this was an insane demo. I mean, Alex obviously <laughs> has gone into enormous detail here. All I'll say is that like when I was looking at this demo, both in Jensen's keynote and, and in person here, I was just so blown away by it. Like usually in a game, when you look at a material, you can kind of identify like, oh, that's kind of, this is how it's done. Here's how it's simplified. You can kind of visually tell, oh yeah, that's a game material. And to me, the idea of this being represented in a video game, all of a sudden it has to, you know, I have to recalibrate my expectations about what materials need to can look like in video games um, versus, uh, versus offline rendering. It's certainly extremely impressive. Yeah, and you know, both of these images that we're seeing here are both pass traced. You have to just remind yourself of that. Right. They're both pass traced, but one can represent the materials better. And it leads to just like the path tracing looking. It's the same path tracing. The material response, though, is just much more accurately modeled. Uh, so the complexity of ray tracing here is the same. We're just, yeah. it's, it's, it's a whole nother level. And now this is brought apart, brought about by neural shading. And here there's a, collaboration with Microsoft to bring this to DXR. And that's a part of it. Uh, uh, there's a Microsoft blog on this. I forget the name of this API. It has a hilarious name. Uh, I forget the exact name of it, but basically this is gonna be added into uh, normal DirectX and it's gonna allow for the usage of tensor cores uh, within a normal compute shader. And you can use it at the same time earlier uh, before that, tensor cores were blocked off essentially from anything other than really, you know, CUDA usage or DLSS yeah. usage. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.